So you were saying Paul George is probable he didn't finish the game because of a hip contusion. I saw him getting stretched out on the side. Yeah, me too. At the game, I was wondering what the heck was going on. <laughs> but yeah. uh turns out he said it was a re-aggravation from the Atlanta game. Mm. And he played the game after the Atlanta game, but he was questionable. So Yeah. And he left pretty much the whole third quarter and fourth quarter of that Atlanta game with this hip injury. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, so we got game two tomorrow night. Uh, that will also be at OKC. Yeah. And I feel it's funny. Of all the matchups we could have had for round one, even as good as Donovan Mitchell is and as good as Rudy Gobert is, I still this was still the matchup I felt most favorable about. Yeah, I wanted it too. I th- I wanted and them or the Pel- the Pelicans. Yeah, I did not want Portland. I did not want them. Zero and four. Yeah, Ugh, and, wolf. and it hasn't been. I mean, a couple times it was close, but it seems like yeah, the they beat us once game. without Lillard. Uh, yeah, exactly. That that goes to the thing we were saying earlier: how they played at the level of competition. Yeah, the team a lot of people always beats us. A lot of people have been joking, like, we really hope Donovan plays because yeah. Thunder will lose if he doesn't play. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's, that hurts that it's almost true. Yeah, it does. And it, it kind of speaks to the unevenness they've had the entire season. When they're focused, they're about as good a starting five as you're going to find. And really, they, yeah. they showed potential at times to be a 50-win team, a one, two, or three seat. No, not a one. I'll say a two or a three. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's just a weird thing where they play to the level of the competition, and so you'll see them struggle with teams that it's like, this team shouldn't even be on the floor with you. You should have your reserves in and still be in the game. Yeah, at yeah. I think we we went like two months from January to almost March, I think, without winning by double digits, yeah. which is just wild. Yeah, that, that was a rough stretch there. And the immediate fallout after the Roberson injury, I think they yeah, won their first yeah. game, maybe two, and then yeah. the wheels fell off. We beat the Sixers the very next day, yep. and uh, then it just kind of started. We You could tell we missed them. Yeah, and it, it's a weird thing as well because they went from being a top five in both offense and defense as far as a team. And then they fell into like they were still top ten, I think. In yeah, offense, but it like, it went just outside top ten in defense. Like it, it was staggering the fall. Yeah, and, and people and, couldn't figure out why Robertson would make our offense better because he he's such a bad shooter. But he just uh, he, understood one of the, role. he understood his role and he knew where to be. He knows when to cut. Like Houston's okay player, but he just doesn't have the same abilities. He, he's not used to playing with that starting five like Robertson is. Robertson's really figured out his role in that starting five, and he, he knows when to slash and when to stay in the corner. And that uh, yeah, people underestimated how big a deal that would be. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, so what do you, what are your thoughts on Corey Brewer, the Roberson fill-in kind of patchwork guy? They didn't make a trade at the deadline, which yeah, really and I was me. bummed. Trade yeah. line was on my birthday, and I was upset. I wanted a good birthday present. And yeah. <laughs> nothing. I, I couldn't believe it. I really thought we'd make a trade. I mean, that's kind of the Presty way is, I mean, yes, the Harden trade blew up in our faces. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. other than that, every free agent deadline, it seems like he finds a way to make a good move. Yeah, last it seems year, like he fleeces Chicago somebody. Deal. Yeah, we had the, last year the Chicago deal that got us yeah. uh, Taj Gibson and Darren, uh, not Darren, Doug <laughs> McDermott uh, yes. out with the Mavericks. Yeah. And uh, before that, we got cancer. So, like, it, yeah. it was just yeah. kind of routine that we would make some kind of splash move and, like you said, fleece people. So, for yeah. us to make no move this year when it's like, dude, we don't have a solid bench scorer. We don't have a backup center. Yeah. Like, that, that was really concerning. But – the move we do make is uh, signing Corey Brewer. Yeah, and there was all the talk that we might sign uh, Tony Allen, mm-hmm. uh, and just nothing was happening. And then I remember I got to work and I got the notification that the Lakers were buying out Corey Brewer, and I was like, ah, we're getting him. And you know, but reunited with yep. Billy, and uh, it wasn't an hour later. Woj was tweeting high interest from the Thunder, so and I was like, okay, that. And even when we got him, I mean, I was happy because I remember watching him uh, play for your Mavs and win a championship. And 
hit playing for the Rockets in the playoffs. Like I knew he was a guy who just like kind of knew his role. And uh, I said initially, I said I don't think he'll start maybe eventually, but I do think he's going to finish games because we were coming off a couple of bad losses with Houston in there at the end where he just he gets kind of scared when he's. Bit, yeah. too much pressure he's not used to it it's almost not his fault but i mean he's a professional athlete but yeah. i just was like he brewer's not going to care he's not going to be scared well then two games in he's already starting and yeah. he's just been a perfect patch i mean for for what i mean we we got him for free essentially like you couldn't ask for a better player to get for free i mean you could get some better players in a trade maybe but to just add him and he's just filled in he knows when to slash he He's better shooting than Robertson. He's not the same defender, but he is long, and he can agitate people a Good little slasher. bit. He's just, yes, and he's just got so much energy, and uh, I just think he's a really good locker room guy. I really hope he returns to us next season. Yep, I agree 100%. Uh, he was one of the guys, believe it or not, from that championship team in Dallas I was the most upset about losing. Yeah, he just seems like a really good piece to have. And that, that was a weird case, too, because in – first round that year when they were playing the Lakers game one in LA they were down 16 points in the second half and Rick took out all of the starters and put in the bench guys and Brewer actually led the charge that led Dallas back into that game I think Dirk hits the essentially game winning shot with like 20 yeah. seconds left and you know Dallas goes on to sweep that series but Brewer never really had a significant role in the rest of the playoff run and I didn't understand it because I was like, dude, yeah, when they were down 16, he had like a 9-0 run by himself. I mean, he yeah. spearheaded the entire comeback. So I just love the energy he brings, man. He never, he just never stops. Sometimes yeah. it's too much. He's but got a 50-point he, he, game to his credit, too, in uh, Minnesota. Oh, wow, I did not know he had a 50-point game. That's yep. surprising. Yep, uh, fairly recently. It was more recent than his time in Dallas. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, let me see exactly when that was. But, yeah, he... He's a dude who, he's streaky. Like like you said, he's not a great three-point shooter, certainly. Yeah. Robertson. He was having an abysmal, an abysmal year with the Lakers, but he, he was one of the yeah. signings yeah. for the Lakers, too, where it didn't make yeah. sense for them to sign I think him. they almost they just needed to fill out the roster. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I agree. He His shot, he I saw his three-point percentage, but 25. he doesn't hit a lot unless he's in the corner, but he has been hitting that corner three for us. Yeah. And uh, he gets a lot of open looks because Westbrook is, well, causes yeah. havoc. That, that's the idea for Westbrook's game is a uh, drive and dish and all that. Yeah, so 50-point game I'm looking at his box score here. But, yeah, it was, uh, when he was with the Timberwolves, I want to say something like 2014 or 15. I believe he was drafted by the Timberwolves. Uh, yes, he came back to them. 51-point okay. game. That's wild. I did not know that. <laughs> Against Houston. Yeah, there you go. So let's see. Corey Brewer, 19 of 30. So he shot 63% for the game. Wow, only 6 3 at point attempts and all of that. Wow. Uh, 11, <laughs> That's a lot of points with. 11 of 15 on free throws. And yeah, 51 points. That's crazy. Did it in about just under 45 minutes. So he played right. nearly the whole game because the game, yeah. the game didn't go to overtime. So he played. Wow, 45 minutes. minutes. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember back in the day, you used to see Dirk occasionally uh, when he would come back from an ankle sprain or something. He would play the whole 48 minutes. And it was back when the Mavericks had Donnie Nelson as their head coach. And Donnie yeah. was like all kinds of weird new age <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And his rationale, and he got Dirk to buy into it, was, you know, hey, you're you're still going to be sore your first time coming in. So I figure instead of letting you sit down and get you know, the ankle stepping <laughs> up, just keep you playing. Like, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Can't get can't get sore. Don't take you out if you don't stop. <laughs> yeah, but you can fatigue the muscle and. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Play. Wonder what he did at halftime. Had him on the bike. Yeah, probably just sitting there like keeping it moving on the bike. Yeah, yeah. That's that's funny, but yeah, it's uh, like I said, I hate I hated losing Corey Brewer, uh, just because I felt like he and I think he was like a mid season addition too. Like we got him like at the. He was either at the deadline or he was like one of those guys signed just like we signed him this yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so he never really had much of a stint in Dallas, but what I did see of it, I, I was encouraged by. So, yeah. Like you said, he reunites with Billy Donovan, his college coach with whom he won two national titles. It made sense. I hope he's looking to stay with us in the future. Cause imagine yeah, it's going to have to be for the minimum, but 
Yeah, but maybe he likes it enough here. And I assume he signed that for the minimum with the Lakers. I could be wrong about that, um, but I, I don't think it was the minimum. Okay. Corey Brewer, Lakers contract. I think he's in it's like eleventh year, so I mean he's not going to get a whole lot from someone. So hopefully no, he likes yeah. it in OKC yeah. enough just to stay. Because OKC so. has, has no well. cap space. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a title as well, but imagine yeah. how good this team can be defensively next year if they do bring him back and Roberson. Yeah. Turn yeah. Forward. Yeah. If he can, yeah, because Robert Robertson may not be. Uh, back by the beginning of the season. I'm not exactly sure what his timeline is, but I know the patellar tendon tear is a long recovery. Yeah. Let's see here. So... Nah. Not finding the hard numbers on his Laker deal, but I want to say it was like, right. nine, like 9 million or something like that. Like, it was a low affordable deal, but it wasn't minimum, I don't think. Gotcha. But, well, 9 million is a pretty big deal. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I, it, it's interesting um, how just the first rounds kind of panned out. I think in general, we we both feel as as far as we can more confident for OKC, but there are some other series that are very open ended and everything right now with regard yeah. to kind of what we can expect and everything. Uh, oops, I'm gonna throw up a graphic here. It's, gonna take a full screen i found uh someone who posted i think it's cbs sports posted a nice graphic of the playoff bracket with the east and west and yeah and it's uh set up in the styling of like old nba jam <laughs> uh, nice yeah nice. it's got the very 90s Boom, game retro feel even like the the tv that says playoff graphic is even like the all static thing like the start of the Not, yeah 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 it's one of the greatest games ever. Oh, yeah, man, I know. I wish they would make remake it. I know they did at one point on PS2, and it just wasn't really the same. But Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. It's fun, though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we, we talked earlier, but it was before we actually started recording. Uh, we saw Houston. Actually, Harden dropped 44. He, other than Paul George, hey. I, I would say he's probably the only guy other than Paul George that really, really tore it up. Uh, yeah, well, uh, he had to play like the MVP to win that game. Chris Paul did not play well. Oh, yeah. I don't know if the, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just the playoffs and he's overexcited, but he did not look good. But uh, James Harden saved that team. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I saw that. They, they only won by three in the end, despite despite having, uh, you know, the MVP and being a one versus an eight. But as you said earlier as well, Minnesota yeah, that's not, not really a true. Yeah, that, that's not a real eight seed. Yeah. <laughs> they they're not the eight seed if Jimmy Butler isn't out for I think it was either four or six weeks. Yep. You yeah. know, he's only been back like four games now, I think. And he, I'm surprised yeah, he they, even managed to come back, honestly. Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it's crazy because I actually had before the season started Minnesota as my four seed. I had, oh, did you? Yeah, I, I had them at my five. Yeah. But yeah. I, I had a feeling, my guess, which obviously ended up not being correct, I didn't have Utah being what they were at. That, that was really the Nope, difference. I had Utah out of the playoffs. <laughs> yep, so did I. I had, and I'm just doing this from memory, I had Golden State, OKC, Houston, so obviously was wrong in there as well. And then I had Minnesota, San Antonio, okay. and then so on. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it it's really surprising. I, I want to see... I don't think they're going to stop the Rockets, but I would like to see them at least push the yeah, Rockets. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm, as a Thunder fan, I can't quite jump to facing the Rockets because uh, I still you just never know with the Jazz and with the Thunder, but yeah. it does feel like we've... I, I don't know. I, I, one thing that was a little troubling to me, I was at the game, so I didn't notice this, but I, I recorded it on TNT and I came home and watched it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think when we, we at one point we had 22 field goals made and we had six assists yep, that, and that's kind of that. scary yeah. uh, that, that's that's not a lot of ball movement and uh, that just sounds like our team got hot and I mean you know uh, that, Paul, that Paul George did get time. hot so that did make me a little nervous they got a little bit better after that we ended up with 16 assists on 41 made baskets yeah. but uh, I, I mean, 
if we go cold, we're going to lose by 30 uh, with that kind of ball movement. So hopefully, but I don't know. It did feel different. The team looked like they were ready, and they they were playing good defense, too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. uh, When they were down, as we mentioned earlier, 16 to 4, I think it was really Mello who sparked that. He had a a nine, nine quick points there. And you know, hitting his transition three, hitting a couple pull ups. I know the one time. Yeah, got got like, a little steal from Gobert yep, under the bucket. Yep, that was what I was about to mention. That kind of dirty play there, and then still getting the uh, the mid range, you know, Jay to go. So he sparked it, and then after that, it kind of felt like Paul George took over. So yeah, that, I think that kind of works to what you were saying. How they weren't getting a lot of assists. Guys just got hot. But the good thing is there was a handoff in there, and as long as you're if you're hot. And you're like Paul George hot where you can like straight cross a dude over, drop him at your feet at the three-point line, yeah. and bury it. And, yeah. You know, I'm not going to worry about not getting an assist on that play, but yeah, it, it is yeah, it is what it is. They, they need but to the, be better overall. The defense was good, though. Uh, Paul George actually shut down Joe Ingles. And mm-hmm. Ingles is just one of those guys, he, he doesn't look like he'd be great at basketball, no. but uh, he's kind of their X factor a bit. I mean, he's... I think they. I think he shoots five or six threes a game. And he's forty-four percent on the season. Yep. I think TNT said that's fourth highest in the league, mm-hmm. and uh, he gets over five assists a game. Like he's just he kind of does it all for them. And uh, I believe the, the stat I saw was that he was like one for six or something when uh, Paul George was on him, and then he was something like four for four when he was not on him. But. Uh, Paul George gave him everything he could handle, which uh, leaves Corey Brewer on Donovan Mitchell. And he he did an okay job. I mean, you can't really guard Mitchell, but he's long. He'll he'll keep he'll keep on him. And yeah, and Brewer said he was at 80 percent. So I'm hoping uh, that the two nights of rest, his knee is back to back to good. But, you know, they also had for OKC, they also had a Brina's kind of playing out of his mind. Yeah, yeah, he was the question, too. Yeah, uh, Saturday I got a notification that he was out, and then all of a sudden Sunday it said he's available, which was really nice. He was actually the highest uh, plus-minus on the team. Yep. That's not always the whole story, but he was a plus-14, and he hit uh, three of five threes. Yep. Yeah. Jeremy Grant was feeding him in that third, uh, the end of the third, beginning of the fourth, and he was hitting them. Yeah, he, he definitely... That's all you want from him, right? You want a guy that can yes. come in off the bench and can actually just provide an outlet option and knock down some threes. It's, it's the role that, for some reason, Doug McDermott never really yeah. melded into here, even though I thought he was yeah. perfect for it. He's doing yeah, that. I, doing I felt like he didn't get. I felt like he didn't really get a fair shot at it either. He he came in late and just Billy didn't really play him a lot. And well, he had a year and a half here. It seems like he would have gotten some. No, no, he he only had the half a season here. Doug McDermott? Yeah, we traded him. We so got him at last year, yeah. and then we traded him to New York for the yeah, 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 yeah. in the Mellow trade. So he only got a half a season here. And he right, kind of right. he kind of said he was unhappy, and he got traded. It could just be coincidence, but uh, hmm. I don't know. Right when Serge opened his mouth about being upset about not getting the ball, he, he became a member of the Orlando Magic. So I, yeah. I don't know. Could just be coincidence. But Serge wouldn't freaking keep his game below the rim he would always extend out to the three-point line uh, yeah I'm like, that's i watched, nice to have that's not yeah essential. i watched game one of uh that toronto series and he was hitting threes in that game too yep. still still up to I, the same still, thing yeah and i saw him send a, a shot into the raptors pretty much i mean he still shows flashes and i i like so mm-hmm. i i was sad to see him go i felt like we got a good deal in that it just didn't oh yeah matter. i feel like we got a really good deal yeah, but, yeah. it just ended up not mattering but yeah, so the let me throw that graphic back up there again. So yeah, the the playoff bracket, it's it's looking very stacked on the West. Uh, we got another interesting series. We got the Pelicans and the Blazers. I saw Anthony Davis actually had a Herculean effort that actually stole yeah. one in Portland. That surprised me. I've been underestimating that Pelicans team since boogie got hurt i mean i just i wrote them off completely and then like they went on like a 10 game win streak i'm like okay they'll come back down to earth and they just haven't and then i picked i think i picked the uh i think i picked portland in six um but but they 
uh, stole game one immediately, and they're in a dogfight right now as we speak hmm. to steal game two. But I, I, don't, I don't know. Interesting. So that might just be a matchup nightmare for them. I'd love it if Portland could get knocked out. Yeah, I'm, I'm torn. I, uh, I want Golden State to have the hardest road possible, and I kind of feel like Portland is harder than, but maybe not. Maybe I'm just underestimating him. Anthony Davis, no one can guard him, but yeah, uh, it sure would be more fun to see what they'd be doing if they still had Boogie. Do you think it's a foregone conclusion Boogie resigns with them? Ah, uh, no, not at all. I think he definitely could go somewhere. I, don't, I haven't heard a whole lot of buzz about him. I guess just because he's hurt, but I mean that's going to be one of the biggest free agent. Even coming off the Achilles, this, you would think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's just a freak. Like yeah. he, I know he can be a head case, but on the court, that man, one, he's... Yeah, that one-two punch of him and Davis is lethal. Like, they both yeah. average, like, strong double-doubles. The only yeah. question I kind of have regarding it is, you know, is that a case where the two guys are going to make it a little harder for them to kind of build out the rest of a team? Yeah, yeah. So, when uh, yeah, when we when we traded for Melo and he was becoming our four, that was one of the first teams I thought about. I was like, who's gonna guard yeah. Anthony Davis or Boogie yep. uh, when we played them? But uh, we've done all right against them. They beat us, I think two two out of three. Two out of three, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a tough matchup, and you know Stephen Adams is a beast, but he can only guard one of the two guys. That's that's what that was the thinking with them. Uh, Making the trade in the first place is yeah, how you yeah. stop both. And when they made that deal, I thought, man, if they can get a outside, like a perimeter threat, yeah, they, that, they're like a, be a nightmare team. Right, they're like state. a piece away because Drew Holiday is a really good point guard. He's having but, a good uh, year, yeah. But they're they're uh, their shooting guard and small forward spots just kind of a, a rotation of guys. They have Miritic now, and uh, he's he's been pretty good, but he's more of a fill in for Boogie. Yeah. And uh, Rondo's kind of resurged with them. Rondo's been pretty good on every team except your Mavs. <laughs> he he did Wasn't not do really well there. Wasn't that yeah, good? yeah, but who is? The Kings are just like a... They're almost a G League team. Oh, man. Uh, so, Warriors take a commanding 2-0 lead over the Spurs. I don't see that yeah. getting any better. That's going to be... No, the Spurs man. definitely put up a better fight the second game. What's what's fascinating to me though is what happens with Kawhi, dude. It, that's he's it's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. So he's got his own medical team. He's not letting the Spurs doctors even look at him at this point. He keeps yeah. saying his team hasn't cleared him. Yeah. But what I've heard is that he actually has like a. I, I think they said it was like his uncle or something. It's kind of like in his ear now. And that he wants out of San Antonio, and so he's yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to mend. I mean, anything, I don't know. I mean, Tony Parker came out and said my hamstring injury was 10 times worse than Kawhi's and I'm playing. Yep. Um, uh, like last night, Pop was praising uh, LaMarcus Aldridge while taking digs at Kawhi. Like, he wasn't saying Kawhi's name or anything, yeah. but it was very clear, like, what he was saying about LaMarcus was also digging at Kawhi. I just, I don't know. I mean, they can offer him the max, and it, I mean, you got to think he's probably still. A, I mean, he's still a max guy. Oh, hell yeah, he's, and he's so, a top five yeah, yeah. player. If he's yeah, exactly, player. yeah, and uh, I mean, he's the best two-way player in the league. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, he can get the most money with the Spurs, but maybe I don't he's think just. That's all it is anymore. I think it's. I don't. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. It, he's not Antonio, a. You got to do something. He's not a free agent this summer, right? He, Correct. I believe, he's yeah. They would have to, they could give him an extension, yeah, but. He's on a $94 million deal. I yeah. Think. I don't know what they're going to do. Like, you just, you, it's almost impossible to get back enough for a, a superstar like him. I mean, ask Oklahoma City and James Harden. Yep, exactly. <laughs> like, you just, I mean, we did get Steven Adams. That, that, That's the only part but, that pans yeah, out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's just like, it. I don't know who, what you do. I, I, I read that the Clippers want to try to trade for him. Yeah. But that, who, that, who who doesn't want him? <laughs> yeah. If, man, I, I've actually heard talk here. If, if you're Dallas and you get, you know, you're presumably getting a top three pick, you have the top three odds at this point. They have the third best odds to get the number one pick. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So if you're Dallas, if you can, we, like, would you give up that top three pick for Kawhi Leonard, knowing he would sign a max deal yeah. with you? Oh yeah. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? You're not me? give up you your just, next ten first round exactly, picks for Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> exactly. You have no idea what a rookie yeah. is gonna turn into. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's just if, like if he's you know a sure thing. De- new deal? Then hell yes. You yeah. Start your rebuild at that point. Yeah, you can rebuild around Kawhi. He just does it so well. Off. And you can get guys I mean, to come to play with Kawhi as well. I think. Well, yeah. Marcus Aldridge went to San Antonio in part because yeah. of Kawhi, but also because of yeah. Kawhi. Kawhi. Yeah. Wonder. I wondered a couple times if Lamarcus regrets at all leaving. I, I kind of didn't blame him when he left, but he's got. A, I mean, I don't think anyone expected Lillard to get this good and. CJ McCollum has just been crazy, but you got to think if Lillard was still there, that team would be really dangerous. Yeah, they would. Um, if LaMarcus was still in Portland, they would legit be, they'd be a hell of a threat. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think he maybe does on some level regret San Antonio just because they really haven't panned out yet. You no. You have a season with them where they did what they, what they did, where, what you thought they would do, basically. Right. They, like uh, OKC knocked them out that first year. Mm-hmm. The last year we had the snake on our team yep. and that was in the second round so i mean i don't think he's made it past the second round no he hasn't uh, yeah so and he got bounced he could, in the first round yeah. one of those years too and it'll yeah only get and this year so yeah he could have done that in portland <laughs> yeah he like old portland now new portland he might be sitting pretty yeah yep. so in the eastern conference uh what what's a series that jumps to your mind there of note we had the Cavs getting just straight oh, man. by the Pacers. Yeah, breaking LeBron's streak of 21 straight first, 21 straight first round game wins. That's yeah. that's so many. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they just got demolished. I'm interested in how they'll play tomorrow night. I'm wondering how they. There's there's going to be an interesting 30 for 30 one day on this Cavaliers team. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird because mix. It, it's it feels like the third incarnation this year. And none of them have worked. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think the whole organization kind of knows the writing on the wall says LeBron is gone. And yeah. They're just kind of crumbling. Like, they're not handling it well. Yeah. Um, I The, the Philly uh, series is... And Lou stepped away. He's still gone, right? The head yeah, he's back. He's, oh, he's back. back now. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't look healthy, but he's back. I... I can't I almost can't imagine he's there next year? May, maybe I'm wrong, but it, it just the coach anyway. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The Miami seventy uh, sixer series got interesting because uh, vintage Dwayne Wade he snapped a seventeen <laughs> yeah. or eighteen, yeah, eighteen I think game win streaker. Yeah, he was seventeen with that game one win, but yeah, that's yeah. nuts too because. Sixers did a fair bit of that without Joel Embiid as well. Yeah, a bunch. Yeah, did, uh, did you see Embiid's uh, the what he said on? What did you see? What he said on uh, Instagram last night? Mm. He uh, he wrote on his story. He said, "I'm uh, uh, I'm effing tired of being babied." So I guess apparently he wants in the game. <laughs> he went to social media to uh, nice. to vent about it. So and it's kind of like I, I don't really. I mean throw the mask on him and get him out there like it's a yeah. face injury you know like he, i mean yeah, it's, uh, the, but you know they were on a yeah, yeah. but i mean they were on a big streak and that's the first game they've lost it maybe he's just mad and yeah i mean he, he'll probably be back soon but philly really put themselves in a nice spot i mean they i feel like they have a real shot at the finals which is so wild to say i would have never thought like when uh Ilya Sova and Bellinelli signed there. I was like, why is everyone going to Philly? They're going to be like Reddick. a six seed. And, you know, like, well, Reddick went there last offseason. He got paid to go there. But uh, but Ilya Sova and Bellinelli were buyout candidates. And I really wanted Bellinelli to come to OKC. I'm glad it ended up being Brewer, but Brewer wasn't an option at the time. Yeah. But uh, I just didn't understand what the. Why? But they just really gone on a street. But they got themselves to the three seed, which puts the Cavs having to face the Raptors in the second round, and they're probably going to get the uh, Hayward list and Irving list Celtics in the second round. So, I mean, I got to think they beat them. So they're only going to have to beat maybe the Cavs, maybe the Pacers might knock them out. Who knows? But. Theoretically, they they've only got to beat the the winner of the Cavs or the uh, 
Raptors, and they don't have to go through both of them. Now, I'm not saying they will beat either of those Three teams, teams but place to be. That's what the yeah. were when they won it, and they got to a yeah. San Antonio that year. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. They they really put themselves in a nice spot, uh, which is just crazy to think of Philly and the. That's kind of who my outs. Uh, that's my dark horse. I dar- I guess it's a dark horse. I don't know if it's really a dark horse because it's such a makes so much sense. But yeah. that's where I think LeBron could end up. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about your. Uh, oh yeah, no, 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 no. That's where I think. Look, Le- I mean, LeBron I do Philly think they could. Funny. Yeah, that, that would be. Funny. Yeah, and it I'd just you know. If he goes to Houston, I'm gonna be mad as hell. Uh, yeah, that's be about that's as mad as, <laughs> as I was. Uh, Durant. Uh, yeah. I'll never be as mad as uh, Durant, but LeBron in the West, I don't want. But I could really see him ending up in Philly if he is going to leave the Cavs because, I mean, Simmons, they're going to have, they can make the room and they're going to have Simmons and Bead and LeBron. That's a pretty scary uh, three headed monster. Yeah. What was, what was the thing? Uh, if LeBron and Paul George went to Houston, the quirky thing I saw with the names, I think you said uh, that yeah. well. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, so they would have, you know, Harden, Chris Paul, LeBron, and Paul George, and all their first names would be Chris, Paul, uh, LeBron, James. That's the four first names. And then the last names would be uh, James, Harden, and Paul George. Nice. <laughs> so it's all four of their names would be mixed in to make the first and last thing. Yeah, that's it's, funny. it's yeah, yeah that's, it's that's it's wild, almost yeah. hard to explain. You kind of have to look at it on paper to yeah. like really realize what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I, I remember uh, when Tyson Chandler came back to the Mavericks for that one season. We had, and they had Chandler Parsons. Chandler Parsons. Well. Yeah. And yeah, the photo op day like before the season, they're both wearing their jerseys side by side. And it's just Chandler. Or yeah, it was uh, yeah, Chandler. Yeah, Chandler Parsons. Yeah, yeah. I just remember thinking like, oh, that looks. I was like, that's kind of funny that worked out that way. But yeah, that's yeah. Like what you're saying, it's all next level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's like, man, one of the times. best. Yeah, that is. That's a wild. That I, someone on Reddit posted it and it blew up on the internet. Yep. But man, your Mavs, uh, Chandler Parsons. That's one of the best moves they've ever done. Getting rid of him. Yep. <laughs> I. Uh, and they should have because he had yeah. straight years where he, well, technically year two, he played like one game of the playoffs, but two years in a row, he had surgery on the same knee because he kept injuring it. Yeah. And it was like microfracture surgery both times. And yeah, same exact deal. Got Harrison Barnes, who I don't think he's part of the future, but he definitely yeah. is a good guy for right now. Yeah. Year yeah. One. But I mean, I play a lot of uh, DraftKings and it's a running joke with me and one of my good friends. Like, I mean, it's just an automatic tweet that's sent out that Chandler Parsons, parentheses, knee out. Yeah. <laughs> like, we we always sound the alarm when he actually plays, and it'll be for one game, and yeah, then he's out again. When he does, too. He's yeah, I mean, player. yeah, it's it's wild. That's probably the worst contract I've seen um, in recent yeah. memory. But, but man, he was good in Conley Houston. Too, but at least Conley earned it. And Houston, yeah, yes. Yeah. In Houston, I, I was thrilled when they got Parsons. Yeah, yeah. He I, was a good ad. I remember thinking, God, that Mavs team, when they had uh, the same year, they ended up when they, for a brief while, had Rajon Rondo, Monte Ellis, Chandler Parsons, Dirk, and Tyson. I was just like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Team. And you guys, got Ron- you guys got Rondo for nothing. Yeah, well, I guess Jay, it was, was it Jay Crowder then, yeah, and, and yeah, now which in, now he's, he's good, but uh, uh, but he he was trash in Dallas. Yeah, that's what really I'm saying. He was Boston. He was yeah, not so good yeah. In Cleveland, and I don't know much of what he's done in Utah. He's been pretty good in the Jazz. I think Cleveland didn't really use him right, but he's been a good piece for the Jazz. I always really have wanted him to. Threes, thirteen points in game. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wanted him to to land on the Thunder a bunch of times because he's a good two way player. Yeah, I, I, I like him. I like him as well yeah. for a role player. In OKC. And he's one of those guys that you kind of hate unless he's on your team. But he like you know he's just kind of he'll if if got your guy gets knocked down, he's the first one to jump up and like sure. get get that guy's back. I, yeah. I like that about him. Yeah, he uh, like I said, he for whatever reason in Dallas it never clicked. That that's kind of the weird thing is I think Dallas has a really good coach, but he does have a weird track record with guys coming in whether it's a, a star player or a you know solid role player just not really panning out 
Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously the Rondo one was the biggest blow up. Chandler Parsons had some flashes here, but never a lot. Uh, Monte was good until Ch until they got Chandler Parsons, and then Monte suddenly got incredibly butt hurt over Parsons getting a bigger deal than him. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, they, I heard stuff where in the locker room, Monte just completely flipped a switch when they gave when they paid Parsons because he didn't like that Parsons was getting paid more than him. I'm like, dude. I get it, but like it's just timing of when the contract happened. Right? right, yeah. The newest guy always, that's just how it works. I think that worked out for Dallas too, though, letting Monte walk, honestly, because. Uh, yeah, he's not really even in the league anything. anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he went to Indiana initially. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, he just never. I kept played. hearing his, his, like, you'd see people saying, maybe we could go get Monte Ellis on the buyout. I'm like, no, no, let's not do that. No defense, no outside game. <laughs> I don't think game. that would help this team. Yeah, no defense, no outside game. Was used to, was one of the best slashers in the league. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That year that Dallas in the first round took the eventual champion Spurs to seven, he was a massive part of that. Yeah. But, yeah, he. He was basically done when he left here. But, yeah, that, that was a frustrating Mavs team for sure because on paper everything looks like, here you go, this is at least the West Finals. <laughs> we have not yeah. won a playoff game since we won the title. Or, sorry, playoff series. We've won. Playoff series. Yeah, wow. We've won a that is crazy. Yep. You, you guys knocked out Oklahoma City the year you won the title, five. right? Yep, in five. Okay. Was that in the... It must have been in the second round, right? Or was it? No, was was it, finals, dude. it was it the West Finals? Yep, I was wow! There. I was there, Game Three. Yeah. Game okay. OKC, okay. First West, first, first Conference Finals game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. OKC that year went through Memphis, the Lakers, and then Dow or then lost to Dallas. Mavericks. Okay. Mavericks went through. Oh no, that's not right. OKC went through the Lakers the next year. Uh, Dallas went through when they won the Yeah, because we got the one seed and we right. played the eight seed of Lakers. Yep. When Dallas won it, they went through the Lakers. Er, no, they went through... Sorry, I'm all turned around. They went through Portland, then the Lakers, then the Thunder, then the okay. for the Mavericks. Okay. Uh, the Thunder that year went through Memphis. I know that. Uh, oh, oh. I think it was the Nuggets. Okay. I know that the... Yeah, and then the Thunder went through the... They beat the Mavs on their way to the finals, right? Yep. Swept yep. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were down uh, in the game one, and KD hit a shot with like mm -hmm. a second left to, to win. I remember that. Yeah, I think not only does Dallas not have a first round, or not not have a playoff series win since their title, I think they have two wins total in like Man. four appearances. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it's bad. But, uh, ben Smith Jr. looks good. He, he's definitely a good foundational piece, I think. I, I think of him as like Little Westbrook, kind of. Like, he doesn't have the build. Yeah, yeah. But he, he does have the yeah. explosiveness to his game. And I think I, the Knicks really... Oh, go ahead, sir. I, I was just going to say, I, I think he's got the ability to develop a solid jump shot as well. That was kind of yeah. what we heard when he was coming out, was that he was... Oh, man, I'm trying to remember who they compared him to at the time, but they were saying it was like some good NBA prospect but with a jump shot they might have said Derrick Rose with a three point shot or something yeah, that makes sense yeah yeah he is athletic mm -hmm. but yeah I think the Knicks really did you guys a favor by grabbing that uh, Frank I don't yeah, know how to Lakita, say his last name Lakita. yeah 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 because I mean he, he might be alright but I mean Dennis Smith was I think a better choice there the fact that Dennis Smith fell to nine is amazing to me yeah yeah and Four point guards went ahead of him. <laughs> yeah, it was just a stacked point guard. Uh, well, here's the funny thing with the Knicks that you might not realize: he actually wouldn't show them his medical records. Interesting. Because of his knee, you know, they, they yeah. were concerned about his knee. Because when he first met them, he met he did a meeting, like a dinner meeting or something, with Phil Jackson before the draft. And Phil Jackson, like, was trying to make him like try like octopus or something at a restaurant <laughs> and Dennis Smith didn't want anything to do with it but like Phil was being weirdly insistent weird and, yeah basically they said that he was so weirded out by it that he wouldn't show them his records the next day when they asked for him yeah so he just he, he wanted them to like it. question it yeah yes, that's hilarious he sabotaged it so he would fall uh, so they wouldn't take him and it just happened to yeah. work out where yeah, there you go that did work out well 
it worked yeah. when he wound up in Dallas. But that's funny because a lot of people would want to play in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if in the NBA it has the same appeal. Like Might it, not. it'd be cool for a little bit, but I just don't think the Knicks have been relevant in way too long. Yeah, no, it's really, no. really power. But no. you know, it it is what it is. Louis uh, Smith and uh, Porzingis would be a pretty nice building ground, I, though. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. I, I've i heard the last couple of years Porzingis kind of floated around as a trade block kind of prospect. and it hasn't Yeah, I don't think out. that's going to happen now. But No. I, yeah, I, I wish. I've been, both times I've been like, oh, make a move, Dallas, do it. It's a perfect yeah. dare or Dirk air apparent. Yeah, it really is. But... Porzingis is crazy too. Man. I was really sad when he tore his ACL. Yeah, just not fun for basketball. No, it's not. It, it always sucks when you got the uh, the top guys getting hurt like that. And it seemed like there were a lot of them this year. But yeah, Boogie. Yeah. Uh, f- four All Stars got hurt, and all of them were on Team LeBron. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, that is yeah, weird. John. It was John Wall was one of them. Uh. But he's finally back, but oh, they're yeah. down 0-2. Yeah. That's another team. Like, uh, both eight seeds really probably shouldn't be eight seeds. The Wizards are the eight. and I mean, if they they didn't have John Wall for a long time, hmm. you got to think they would have ended up a little higher. Possibly, yeah. So who do you, I guess uh, we'll, we'll kind of wrap here. Uh, who do you predict coming out of the East? You were kind of implying Philadelphia earlier. Ah uh, man, I I it, crazy as it is, I don't think it's gonna be the Cavs. I think LeBron yeah, Street I, might be over. Yeah, um, it's like eight; it needs to be over. Yeah, so I kind of think it'll be Philly versus the Raptors, and I think the Raptors are gonna finally have they they started off game one pretty ugly, but they really came out tonight, forty four points in the first quarter. Hmm. I think the Raptors are finally gonna get it done i think i think the raptors will come out of the east yeah that that was my think as well or my thought as well uh i did get a little iffy seeing you know philly racking up that ridiculous win streak yeah yeah now that that is the team that i think at this point is the threat to the raptors yeah obviously had cleveland not imploded kind of like they have and had boston not lost hayward and kyrie more so kyrie because they didn't really get a chance to play with hayward but had they not lost Kyrie, I think that would have been a damn interesting match. Yeah, they yeah. Lost at that point. To come yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know that that's how it shakes out. Uh, in the West, meanwhile, I think you're probably looking at Houston finally. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we get to watch Harden then presumably win a title. Yeah. 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 I would. I would. It's not anyone but the the Warriors. I'd be happy. But. <laughs> I mean, that, this OKC team, I'm definitely not homer enough to be like, oh, yeah, I think we're going to do it. We're going to get out. But we are such a crazy team where if, if we play to top potential, we can beat anyone. And stay healthy. Uh, I cert- yeah, and stay healthy. I certainly wouldn't predict it, but, like, you're not going to see me shocked if, uh, if like, we beat Houston. Yeah. Um, it just, I think Houston I mean, would shock me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, if it were the yeah. Warriors, I know that's not who we would face in the next round. Right. If it had been the Warriors, I think that's the one where I would say I wouldn't be shocked. Because yeah, which is crazy point, to think about. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think it's the I think it's the Durant factor. I think it's Westbrook being extra motivated and pissed off and the yeah. whole team. Yeah. And we already have one of the best home crowds and environments yeah. in general. Yeah, you we put do. The freaking Warriors. <laughs> in yeah. Place and holy crap, yeah. man. I was so frustrated with the Thunder for a while. I wanted. I got to the point where I wanted to fall to the seven and yeah. get the Stephless Warriors in the first round because I knew we'd come and show up. I mean, obviously, I'm happy we got home court advantage yeah. and all the way up to the four. But uh, I was that was just when I was, you know, kind of mad for a minute because <laughs> yeah. this Thunder team was frustrating. No, no doubt, no doubt. But uh, yeah, I I think. Uh, God, I don't know. It's hard for me to pick. I still kind of think the Warriors will come out of the West. Uh, they I make want it to, so easy to hate them. I know. I want to believe that Houston could knock them out if Houston gets past uh, us in the second round, if we make the second round. <laughs> yeah. But um, did, you, I, did you see that Barkley called James Harden the most unguardable player in NBA history? 
Oh, wow, in history? That, that's, a, that's some big words. Shaq, he yeah. is. Shaq and Kenny even confirmed, like, you mean ever, not like now. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, ever. And yeah. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Michael Jordan might have something to say about that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'll say Harden, this. Is... Harden is. He, look, he makes everything look effortless. And that's yeah, different. Yeah. Some guys, you can have two guys run at the same speed. One looks like he's gliding, one's real hard chops, but it's the same speed. Harden is yeah. one of those glide kind of guys, so it looks yeah. easy. And he just, he draws fouls just at an outrageous amount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he makes his free throws, so it's just, yeah, he is I, I he think is he's definitely good. one of the, like, most unstoppable scores in NBA history, but saying that's like saying top 10, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah, like, for nah, sure. Don't, don't tell me one. Let's, let's see if he's actually won something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he needs to win a title before you can call him unguardable. Yeah, I mean, for real. But, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at, man. If he, if he gets it done this year, that means Westbrook, the one guy that, you know, was kind of loyal, ends up the last one. And maybe yeah, if he yeah, gets a title. Yeah, that's true. Level. And that yeah. sucks. But there, we were mentioning earlier there's going to be like a 30 for 30 one day on the Cavs team. That yeah, team. definitely going to be a 30 for 30. Arden, on the Arden's going to get MVP this year. I'm about to say, especially when Arden wins MVP. I mean, that means all three of them will have an MVP, which yep. is just crazy. Yep, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I wonder if that's ever happened. I wonder if there's any other team that's ever at one point had yeah, three, three MVPs. I mean, maybe like at the end of a career or something when like, you know, a guy yeah. just signed. But I, I don't know. That's pretty amazing to think about that you I want to the finals once and one one yeah 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 that sucks man I, I really like I try not to lament it these days because there's nothing yeah. to say on it but you, every now it seems every year you have it gets scrounged back up into the headline yeah Harden's SI uh, interview where he's you know kind of lamenting uh, oh, yeah God, yeah he was like how do you how do you give that up and yeah. you're like god dang it you're right how do you give that yeah, up yeah I, I don't know man that Presti's made a lot of great moves in his career yeah he has that's one that, that wasn't one never leave him yeah yep so anyway well uh, thanks for joining me on this NBA playoff talk yeah. Uh, if you're interested, yeah. maybe we can see about doing it next week as well. Make it maybe a weekly thing in the playoffs if, if you're interested. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. All right, well, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Um, George, I will be in touch with you. Like I said, uh, we'll do. We can see about this next Tuesday, or we can pick a different night if it works better. I'm just kind of juggling some schedule stuff around, trying to figure out what works best. But sounds good. Uh, until next time, guys. I've been Derek. This is Jordan. Salute.